any special programs going on? Or? Um, no, we've got a leadership academy that we're continuing. I want to talk about that always. Yeah. Because that's just the right. Well, the MIA is coming to us now. They want us to spotlight what we're doing. So that's a big, they want us to host so they can come in and see. We won't give it to them. So now they're like, can we host at your school? Could you do that? And we're like, yeah, we'll do it for you. That's fine. Well, welcome. As we look at all the different facets that a Milford student faces, we talk about the academics, we talk about the programs, and obviously athletics is a big part in all the athletic programs. I was very impressed the first time we had our guest on when he was very, very strongly um, describing his cherubs and the people that he's in charge of as student athletes. And that becomes so critical, and you'll see how even the state now, or the MIAA, is looking at Milford for leading the way and putting in perspective that we have students who are athletes and that the academics and the athletic programs have to be balanced. Very nice programs, and tonight we start the winter. So why don't we so start with an introduction? We are, we're ready to rock. Um, it's day two, as we filmed today. We opened up yesterday, so we've got a couple hundred kids. We just finished up uh, the fall on Thursday, Thanksgiving, with, the, with a real strong win against uh, uh, the pesky Randolph team. Uh, you get three days off. Te you know, Those orange things. Get, yeah, 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 get moved forward. You know, so we, um, we opened up the winter yesterday. We've got, uh, we've got our eight or nine teams all set and rocking. We've got tryouts. We've got practice. Some of the teams cut. Some of the teams don't cut. So, um, you know, we'll be, uh, as I look at the time, we'll, we'll have practices till about 7.30 tonight in the gym, and we're using various gyms throughout the, throughout the district. Everybody's been really helpful, and yeah, we're ready to go. We got our nine teams, and we're ready to, ready to see what we can but do. you just finished nine teams, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> you have nine per season. I, mean, I yeah. sat there and said, my God, you already put through yeah. nine teams. Yeah, and that's nine sports. That doesn't count if they've got a J we, Every one of them has a JV. Some of them have freshmen. You know, so uh, I think um, no, that's right. Nine sports, not yes. nine teams. Yeah, yeah. I I think um, I did the numbers. We were doing a presentation, our step up presentation for the eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade at Stacy Middle to let them know what we're doing at the high school. And I think when I did the numbers, it was um, sixty one or sixty two teams altogether. It's mind boggling. You have about twenty teams per season when you start to filter in JV, varsity, JV, and freshman teams. So um, it's busy. There's a lot to do. <laughs> Herding cats. Yes. Yep. I mean, just unbelievable m number of cats that yes. you have to herd. About 400 to 450 per season. So. so now if we start, okay, out of the nine in the fall, give me a recap. I guess football first? Football, six and five, winning season. Um, you know, it, it, in my opinion, the Hockamock League, as I've said before, is the NFL of high school sports. You know, I was actually, uh, you'll probably appreciate this, I was at a, um, a conference at Stonehill College, 
and it was to coaches and athletic directors and we were there was uh, multiple different topics so main, the main topic was leadership which you know people are really looking at us as a as a a leader in leadership if you can if there's a better way to put that and so the Stonehill AD basically without knowing that myself the King Philip athletic director and a couple other ADs were in the audience she was explaining that certain leagues throughout New England like let's say if you play football in the big three they're gonna pull your file if you play uh, I don't know name anything else soccer in the Tri Valley they're gonna pull your file and she said at the end she said if you for example if you're in the Hockamock League we pull your file for any sport. Doesn't matter what sport it is. That league is the premier, this is a quote, the premier league in New England. And of course, we're in, sitting there going, yeah, because we're, you know, we're in the league with, with all you know, the other 11 schools now. But it, it, it doesn't matter whether it's golf, whether it's football, whether it's lacrosse, basketball. She was very clear that this league is so strong and the depth is so deep that, boom, you get, a, you get an extra look at most colleges in New England if you're from this league and you're a student athlete from the Hockamock League. So we're fortunate we feel... We so feel what do you have to do to be in the Hockamock League? Um, that's a really good question because for, since like 1974, all the way up until about six years ago, it was nine teams, and it stayed nine teams right. forever. And then they brought on a 10th team, Attleboro. They moved to 10, and then the league decided they wanted to go to 12. And there was multiple reasons for that. There was more berths in um, playoffs. And they just wanted to even it out. They wanted two divisions. You know, the Davenport is the smaller schools, and the Kelly Rex is the upper division. And um, I can tell you without a doubt that they had mo probably 60 to 70 schools apply uh, when, when Taunton now, and Milford were accepted. When you say smaller schools, to the non-athletic parents, what's a smaller what school? Mean? So um, the division that we're in is anywhere from 850 to about 1250. So we're at one of the, I'd say upper, upper two thirds, depending on how you look at it. But we, we're in, certainly in the small division of, of the Hockamock League, the Davenport. Um, Oliver Ames just moved up to the Kelly Rex this year. North Attleboro moved down um, because their numbers. Every, every three years, we reevaluate. So what would be a big school? Oh boy, uh, Taunton is 2400. 2,400. Now they have eighth grade at their high school, and they did. A, it was brilliant the way they did that because they've kept a lot of their kids who were going to Coyle Cassidy and smaller schools, you know, um, private schools. But their matriculation rate from eighth grade to ninth grade is in the high 90s now. The kids just are there. So th it sounds like a lot, but their eighth graders are not allowed to play varsity sports. They can play JV and freshmen. So you're looking at yeah, 2,000. But, st but still, that's a heck of a lot of good training. Absolutely. You yeah. know, when you, you start you, thinking about getting a coach. Yep. who you're going to play for at high school. Kind of like a red shirt freshman, yes. it feels like. Yeah, because you can put them on JV. It, you know, look, think about some of the non-contact sports. You have tennis, you have cross country, you have golf. These kids can get as high as JV as an eighth grader. But I'm thinking yeah. of the team sports. I mean, you're influenced by the coach. Absolutely. You know, if you look at a basketball team, is it a fast break? Is it, you know, how does the coach pick the students that he's going to play most? Right. It's Does his it style Absolutely. or her style. Sure. So if I get an extra year, it's kind of, I mean, I hate to call it a red shirt freshman, but. But yeah, it is. It is it a really red is. shirt freshman. They're in the high school system as an eighth grader, and the rest of the schools don't have that. So it's definitely an advantage. You're looking at, so you take King Philip and Franklin, you know, they're in the 1600, 14, um, yeah, 369. Yeah, you're looking at, in the, in the upper division, you're looking at 1,400 to 2,400 kids. So, I mean, realistically, when you look at a big school, they've got twice as many kids yes. to pick from, Sure, is what you're saying. Yep, and we still compete against them. That's pretty yep. amazing. Yeah, no, we take, we, we, take, we take that with pride, you know. Um, you have Canton and Foxborough that have 800, 850. They play everybody as well. We have 1,100. So, you know, our, our basic philosophy is we don't look at numbers. We look at the schedule, and if you're on our schedule, we're working. It's all about competing. Right. It's a really, you know, it's something no, it, that I've tried to accentuate. From a science side, genetics has something. Absolutely. If I get to put, pick from a gene pool of 2,000, yes. and you get to pick from 1,000, yep. we got to work a lot harder. you got to work Absolutely. a heck of a lot harder. Yeah, yeah and we beat those teams. We, you know, not all the time. It depends on the sport. It depends on the season. But we are growing to, to a status where... 
you know, we've, we had a couple of second place teams in the fall. We had a Hockamock League championship team with cross country. We had volleyball that made it uh, to the quarterfinals in the state. They also got the MIA Sportsmanship Award um, for some of their activities uh, with Hopedale. We got the Division II MIA Sportsmanship. Hopedale so if you look P at football, P3. six and five. Yep. Successful season in your mind? Yeah, I think, you know, I think you have to take a look at, you know, who we're playing, of course. You know, it's the Hockamock League. There are no, you know, I would, I would say in other leagues, there are there's definitely. There's no gut teams. No, there's no bunnies. There's no easy layups. That's what we say. We actually say that to the coaches and the kids. There's no, it's, it's like the NFL. Any given Sunday, you can lose. You can get a, I don't know, a one and nine team that plays the Patriots nine and one. And if we're not on the top of our game, you, you, you could lose. That's the way it is in every sport. There is no, there is no haves and have nots. Everybody has, and then there's the upper echelon teams. But the other, I mean, when I think hockey. about it, I would think I'd rather be a six and five team in the Premium League, yes, than you know a seven and two team or in a lower league because the kids who need scholarships to further their education, Absolutely. they've got to have a better chance. No, it's a good perspective because you you know you take well, take the Stonehill AD. She didn't know we were in the audience. She had no you know that's who they're looking for. They're looking at the Premier Leagues. You take a, a kid from a league, I don't want to mention leagues, but. Another uh, the league. The Okie League. Yeah, exactly. That, and they're out there. Yeah. They're out there. And, you know, you get a 7-2, and 6-3, and three, and you get a kid that runs, you know, maybe 100, 150 yards a game, and then you get a Blake Hill who gets 200 yards per game with two broken wrists, by the way. That story in the Herald was amazing. I mean, um, you know, nobody knew. He didn't tell anybody he was hurt. But you get a kid like that who runs up, gets four touchdowns per game and three, four, even gets 100 yards per game in this league, you're gonna pe people, people develop pipelines to certain leagues and certain schools, and we're now in that league where people will take a look and say, you know, th they're they're 500, no, I mean, they're no seven four last year. look at they get to college and the pros look at the Big Ten league. Absolutely, they're going to look at Big Ten a lot m more often than the Patriot League. Yes, you yep. know, it's just fact of life. They've it, got it is what X it is. hours to invest. They know that those te those teams are competing at a much higher rate and a much more physical rate depending on what sport it is. But it's the upper echelon. It yeah. is what it is. If you can scratch out a, so good, now, a good record, you're in a good place. Next sport, cheerleading. They didn't do too bad this year, did they? I'll tell you what. Uh, that team just, it, it never ceases to amaze me because, you know, when I was in high school way back in the dark ages, cheer was different. It, it didn't have the components of stunting and the athleticism, the gymnastics, the dance that it has now. So cheer truly is an athletic sport and, and we treat it as a sport at Milford High School as do most of the schools in, in Massachusetts. Um, Coach, Coach Heather, Coach Johnson, she has, you know, three out of the four last year, three out of the four last years, they've won the state championship. Now that alone is impressive. But if you take the fact that we've been moved into different divisions, that's three different divisions. So it's not like we're, we're hammering one division. We've been moved up, you we've know, been moved over, my daughter, and we're still winning. My daughter was on the cheer team at Milford High and on Cheer Excitement Start. Mm -hmm. Heather and Tony got away with things that I always laughed and said, if I tried that as yes. a soccer coach, yep. the parents would have lynched would go me. nuts. You yep. know, down at Fino Field Annex and her and Tony making us line the cars up so that the um, the lights the lights yeah, they could have would any, stay I'm on and we could get another yeah, half get hour more practice. Yeah, I'm yeah. Trying to think, if I ever told the parents, well, come on, line up your headlights because I want to get another half hour. Yes. I don't know. I'd get away with that. You, I think you need to have that championship pedigree. I think you know it just as as the winning moves forward. I think the expectations raise and then people jump See, on you know, board. Parents, because everybody. Even when Emily, okay, she was a senior at Milford High, normally at Holy Cross, you can't cheer your freshman year first semester because you didn't go out for the team. Oh, uh, okay. Somehow that coach knew about Milford from all the CES, the All-Star yep. and all of that. Yes. And Tony and Heather introduced her. Next thing I know, Emily's trying out for she's Holy not, Cross yep. in the spring. Wait a minute, she's not even going there till the fall. Right. You know, it was like she hasn't. The, uh, the contract, you know, the offer letter wasn't Oh, the even le LOI, the letter of intent, you know, yes. Yeah, but yep. it's funny. You sit there and, you know, they don't do that for cheering, but her acceptance letter wasn't, the ink wasn't even dry yet. Yep. And she's well, already it, trying it, out. It's that type of program. Certain, certain schools are, are, if they're lucky enough, if they're fortunate, 
you have coaches that are committed like that, and you have kids that are committed, and you have families that are committed, and it's it, it's a lifestyle, as you know. It's not just a sport. It's no, not six just, six days a week minimum. Yep, yep, yep. And sometimes the seventh day is optional, depending. I was, you know, depending, right? I got to tell you, I was so happy, and my daughter, if she hears this, will kill me, when I found out that the um, commitment at Holy Cross was so much less. To ch on the cheering yeah, side. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not a bad thing. I was worried that saying, "Hey, you're putting in six days a week mm -hmm. to this cheering with Tony and Heather. God bless them. I love it, but the academics, right, is going to really be. You know, you can see a geometric increase in the demand. So seeing the cheering Without go down, I didn't feel. Yeah, bad you were at okay all. with that. You know what I mean? And I, I would be too as a parent. I'm getting to that level where my kids are getting older, and we have to start thinking about those types of decisions. But no, you're right. It takes an extraordinary person to compete in high school and do two or three sports, which is something that we push. But at the college level, uh, one sport, yes. you know. Um, so now it, it's boys soccer. Boys soccer. Um, did well, competed, scored some points. You know, we had some, we were close to making the tournament this year, you know, making forward progress there. We feel like um, we've got a strong nucleus of, of young guys, a little bit untested this year. We felt like... I think what was, was really a, a turning point for me with, with boys soccer this year, um, I've been in this league since I was 13. I've coached, I competed in it, I coached in it, now I'm administrating in it, you know, and I know, I know coaches at every school, and I can tell you that at just about all of our home games, the coach would walk over to me, because I'm at everything, and, um, and happily to be at everything at the home games and, and whatnot, um, you know, like, wow, you guys were just, you guys were so disciplined this year. You know, different style. Um, you know, we've had different coaches over the years. We had a new coach this year. Um, coach Asim did a great job, as far as I'm concerned, in his stint as head coach. Coach Edwards was our new coach this year, and I think he brought a different style um, that was just that was just a, a more disciplined. It was a different style as far as what they were expecting to see from Milford. So that kind of tripped people up as far as that, f that first game, that first time around that they played us. So that was nice to see. But I think, I think this is a young group, and I have high expectations for the boys' soccer team. I do. Girls with sticks. Girls I, with sticks. <laughs> I went to Holy Cross Field Hockey because yes. I had to take yep. pictures. My intern is the star on the Holy Cross Field Hockey team. I could not figure that game out. I'll tell you what. So can I tell you a story? The, um, so I'm interviewing for this job three years ago. And um, one of the really intelligent questions was, if coach gets sick, what sports can you jump in and coach? I said, every single one of them except field hockey. Field hockey. I can coach it. I don't know the rules. No, I don't think anybody. There's, if you sit at a field hockey game, there are no complaints when the, when the referee blows the whistle like every 12 seconds. Because nobody knows. Nobody knows the rules. I had I'm not two sure the parents kids do. following me. Yes. They wanted to make sure they got copies of my pictures. Yes. And the, the whistle would blow. I'd look. And the mother would tell me. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, things like, why didn't you take a backhand? Not yes. allowed. Yeah. Why didn't you? can't do that. There's you certain times you can flick it up in the air, and there's other times that it's a dangerous play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could coach the game and substitute the gals and do all that, but when they blow the whistle a couple, a couple times a game, I'll, I'll, I'll walk over to the bench and I'll go to the coach. What, what was that? Yes. And she's got to explain it to me. New coach this year, Kim Danish was our, our head coach this year. Emily um, Abundanza is finishing her doctorate's degree, so she didn't have time this year. So it was a good transition. They had worked together previously. Um, yeah, we, we had a couple, a couple wins. This is an extremely competitive league for field hockey. So, but we, our numbers were up this year. We had 44 gals, so we were full at the varsity level. We were full at JV. We feel good about that. We had new assistant coach Tim Dowd, who's a hockey guy, English teacher at the school. So we, we loved what he brought to the table. So we think our future is bright with that sport as well. We do. We feel good. Now you got people running away cross country. Yes, yeah, very exciting this year. Um, our girls, our girls um, won a couple of meets last year. They won one meet this year. Um, Coach Sanzone, you know, has definitely been working hard with them. So I think they gave everything they had. Again, you're going you're to get tired of me saying it. Cross country, this is the premier in the state. Typically, out of the Hockamock League, you know, when we split up in divisions at the state level, we have three or four out of the twelve state champions or, or runners up. So our girls, you know, uh, have, been, have been working hard to, to compete. Our boys this year, though, uh, won the Hockamock League Championship, so we're really excited about that. Jack Khalil um, is, is quite the individual runner. Cool. He made the All-State meet last year as a sophomore. Got injured this year. I don't like making excuses, but at the end of the year, he missed two weeks of training. 
We still were able to pull out the championship. New head coach, John Vanderkyle, we elevated him to the boys' side. It just made sense for each coach to really work with their own team. Uh, we had some newcomers, you know, another captain, Jared Luce. This the guys from top to bottom really, really worked hard over the That's summer. That's going to be at all of these levels. Um, when you look at the difference that separates, you know, the best from the second from the third, it's got to be a killer to even have an injury to try Absolutely. and stay up. Yep. You know, and one of the things we're fortunate about is at least with the fitness and the conditioning sports, uh, we have the pool. We have a brand new fitness center. So we're able to get these guys and these gals some augment their, their time out, or, you know, or their injured time, put them in the pool. If they've got an injured arm, we can throw them on a treadmill or put them on an elliptical. So, you know, we feel really good about the progress we've made with the fitness center, the pool. We, we couldn't be luckier. Well, really hopefully one of two schools. in about 10 years, there'll be a few people growling when they hear this, but there's a new school coming. Yes. Yeah. When, when we look at doing the high school over. Yeah. And, and it's coming. I, 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 you know, I haven't I been there for years. I loved that high school. I loved it when we were the first class out in 74. Yeah. But you got to look and say, okay, as we get near 50 years, you know, that, that's our aircraft carrier, our battleship. Yes. But even the battleships needed ne some renovation. Yes, facelift and whatnot. I would say, um, you know, I worked in two other schools. One was my alma mater in uh, up King Philip, and one was Canton. Both of those schools were built about the same time, and they've both since, one, renovated entirely that was King Philip and one built a brand new one that was Canton but yeah you know it, it's it's tough and I understand that as a former student at a school that you know when I heard that they were rebuilding a new one for, for my alma it, it hurt a little bit but I've gone back as an alumni I'm on the alumni association but you know it's nice for the kids well, because we you need it after a while different cheering events and all and you went to a place like Shrewsbury and you saw that field house we were up there for the uh, state uh, state uh, tournament and you sit there and say hmm yep wouldn't it be sweet to have yes. that? It would be wonderful to have a field house. I mean, that would be a long-term projection and vision for certainly um, for where I sit in the athletic office. You know, to have a larger gym with maybe, you know, not a competitive track, but a track around it where we can compete and run and have, a, and have two or three gyms like Taunton has, yeah. like Franklin has, you know, like Shrewsbury has, where you can stack up a couple of different teams that are practicing volleyball, that are practicing basketball, you know, during the um, spring season, we're always looking for space, but to be able to have different teams in there at the same time, how great would that be for camaraderie? Well, it was 11 know? years ago when we talked about middle school. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be nice? And for 11 or 12 years, we kept saying, we need to save our pennies. There's a school coming. Yes. And now you look at Woodland. Woodland is amazing. Okay. And I sit there and say, okay, as, if as we a, start now, got to start dream planning. big. Yes, because I like if that. we put it away now, a little bit every year for ten yep. or eleven years, it won't, why it won't can't be as difficult. our kids have a field house so that when people come in, yep, they look and say, "Wow, I wish we had one of these." Can I can I tell you something? That is one of the reasons that I pursued this job so feverishly was, you know, I grew up right next door. I'll tell anybody. That my going joke is I was born at Milford Hospital. So I'm kind of a Mill 40, but not exactly. I get it. And people are still, I get it. I'm, you know, this is home to me. I, I plan to retire from this district. I love. But one of the reasons that drew me to this job, two of them were huge. One was being moved into the Hockamock League. I like your attitude. That's our attitude right now. Why be a small fish, you know, a big fish in a small pond. Let's be a big fish in, in the biggest pond, right. right? Let's be the best. And coming from where I competed in the 80s and where I coached in the 90s into the 2000s, this place always struck me as, as two things. Incredibly tough. Mm -hmm. Incredibly tough. Didn't matter what you played Milford in, they were ready to, to knock your block off. And that could even be in a sport like track where there's no contact. They're just going to bring it. They're going to bring it every single game. And secondly, the commitment that you could see from the fans and the parents, you could just feel it living next door, that this town always wanted the best. And, and I like, that's just the way I've, I've grown up. It's a curse and a blessing all at the same time. It's got to be bigger, better, best. And why shouldn't our kids have the see, best? See, you know, you talk about being a Milfordian. I finally told my daughter, who's up with you at the yes, high school. Yes, yeah, 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 great gal. I said, Lexi, you're finally, you can claim to be a true Milfordian. You're third generation Milford. Yes. yes and you yes. live within two miles of your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, you got to have yeah, that last yeah. piece. Absolutely. But yep. you know, when yep. you joke about it, 
I look at the dedication, the ownership, the passion of the educators. Yes. And That's it, a great group. K to 12. I'll never forget, we've been fortunate, at Milford, that we've had surpluses. But the year that we got stung, like everybody else, I saw towns around us, and their teachers were delaying their raises. And I sat there as finance committee. I said, how does that help me? If I can't afford my mortgage now, right. how can I afford a double raise of my mortgage in 12 months? Because 12 months are going to blink. I remember, and you never think of it, it was our union teachers. You know, everybody always says the union only cares about itself. Yep. Well, it was our union teachers that came to us and said, we'll give up our raise if you promise that that money stays to save teachers. How do you say no? There's not many. You know what? That's impressive because there aren't many unions that would do that. You couldn't. No. You couldn't ask a union to say buckle, you know, just buckle down and give up a raise and we'll try and save some of your members. One of the, one of the um, and I won't mention which district I was in, it was not Milford when I was teaching. Um, one of the years that it was really lean and we knew we had to let teachers go or take a zero percent, we had union folks saying, let the, let, let the youngins go. Yeah. I've Are you kidding it. me? No. Let the youngins go. I've heard it. They'll come back in a couple years. No, they won't. Th I've that, heard that it over won't. and over where they say, well, if we give up the raise, we'll never get it back. If we fire the teachers, it'll get bad enough that they'll have to come back. And I yeah. sat there and I said, wait a minute. How about the kids yeah. for the, the year two or three two, years? Yes. That so suffered. that's admirable that they came. I wasn't here then, but it's admirable that the union came with that and type of perspective. That's not something you ever forget. No. So every once in a while when, yeah, maybe this year was a 1% inflation year and the teachers got two, okay. Well, there was the 2% that they got zero. Right. You know, so that kind that of... That compounds. You never really make that up. Right. I know that from my days. But, you know, now when you start looking and you say, okay, if we start planning now, I want to see a long-range education plan that takes care of the science the engineering, yes, the, the STEAM, math, right? the, Absolutely. the STEM. Yep. Now you have to say STEAM because if you don't throw the arts in there, Everybody. the liberal arts majors yell at the chemistry <laughs> yes, people. Yes, yes, so, yep. but See, I'm already conditioned. <laughs> it's already, we got that, but we have to look at, okay, what do we do for the kids' athletic side? Because there has to be a balance. Agreed. I think, and again, I think one of the things that I'm looking at is as we continue to compete in this league, and, and you know, we ha in my opinion, we have to embrace competition. You know, you competed for your job. I competed for my job. We compete for parking spaces. When you shop at Target, you compete for the shortest. We, we compete. I don't care. It, it, it might sound funny, but no matter what you're doing, you're competing. We just have to openly embrace it. And I feel like our department has done that. The, kid, the kids love it. You know, and it was always there. I'm just putting a label to it. It was always in this mm -hmm. town. So I'm labeling it uh, more openly maybe. That's all. But, no, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's, it's important to do that and, and, and push forward. You know, but I like the idea of having a long range plan. And I think what it comes down to is if we don't want to provide the best for our, our kids, who will? We're the only ones, we, we're the only, you know, the, the Milford folks, we're the stewards Pete, of, of the future. We've had this argument for countless town meetings. And a few of us have gotten up and said, you know, I don't need anybody from Beacon Hill or Washington or Capitol Hill to come and tell me how to take care of Milford kids. Right. Milford's town meeting has always led the way in taking care of our kids. So now when you look and you say, if I'm planning for a school for 10 years from now, and you say, well, it's going to be 80, 90 million, 60 million was Woodland. Right, right. But let's say building a new wing on the high school and renovating the others, it's going to be 80, 90 million dollars. Yes, most likely. Okay. It's ridiculous money. But if you came back and said, doing all that with a premier field house is going to be $94 million. Well, you know, if in for, for a penny, in for a pound. Absolutely. And it's also, you compound that to the future. Now you have that for, what, another 40 or 50 years? Right. And I think one of the things that's important for me you know, I, I love your idea. I feel like you've been sneaking at my notes in my office, to be honest with you, um, because th we, th this is definitely where um, I think we need to talk about it and, and begin to plan for certain situations. But if you want to keep Milford kids in Milford, 
If you want to compete with the surrounding towns and the private schools and whatnot, why wouldn't we offer the best? And when you see Mike Walsh, you just got to go field house. Yeah, so yeah, 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 field yeah. House. <laughs> so I think he'll. I think he would be on board. You know. Um, so how'd the girls' soccer do? Girls' soccer did. They were close to qualifying this year. Um, you know, we qualified last year for the tournament. Um, it was a. It was a, an interesting situation with a couple of veterans and a bunch of new kids. You know, new freshmen. We had five or six freshmen that started varsity. We had some returning veterans. So it was. It took the coach some time to gel, get them gelled, and get them ready to rock in this league. Um, but what was nice for both boys, boy, boys and girls soccer, we were in it all the way till just to the end of the now, season. Is that Jay or Jay Maste? Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, definitely a soccer guy. Knows his stuff. Um, My neighbor. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. next door neighbor. I was going to ask you yeah. how you knew him, but um, definitely a, a soccer mind. You know, with all the soccer folks I've met in my time and all the soccer I played when I was younger. Um, yeah, good. Just a good, good season. We, we would have liked to have been in the tournament, absolutely. But you know, for as hard as those captains and those kids worked and the coaches worked, yeah, I'm again, proud of there them. There, you've got somebody who Jay always was able to balance. You know, yes, you want to win. Yes, but there's we're going to do it the right way. Yes, there's, winning yep. the right way is the goal. Just winning, not mm, yeah. No, we don't want to be that. Town you know, and or that he's team. got three daughters that you can see. He and Marie really put time, quality time, because they've turned out to be fine young ladies. Yep. And if the 16 others that are his daughters each yes. year, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yep. come out the same way because of what he does, then you're in a good place. You feel good. Right, you know, and we feel like we're doing that right now. We're competing, but, you know, you look, look back to our core values, and, and number two for the athletics is, you know, championship sportsmanship. doesn't matter how the other team is behaving. Right. Win, winning or losing, you shouldn't be able to tell how the game is going by the way we behave on the court, on the floor, on the turf. But that, We're just competing. Pete, that's a life lesson because when you get into a boardroom. I think I need you to come to my next, uh, to the three um, sports nights that I have. we got 400 people. I think I'm going to have you come in and you just know, echo that. It's a life lesson because it is. No, it is it's so sure. hard to take junior managers or junior executives and say, look, I know so-and-so is acting like a rectum. That's fine. Right. Do not lower yourself. Because although, you know, you'll see people get emotionally scream, they yell, and you're like, no, no, seriously. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I've gotten up and walked out when I said, you know, at that point I was 51 years old. I said, my mother doesn't even yell at me anymore. When you want to have a rational conversation. Absolutely. So teaching the kids early on that this is how you behave, this is the standard you maintain. And should some other town come in and operate below that standard, well, shame on them. But we, we have to rise. You've got above. an M on your chest. You're yep. representing Milford. Do it well. Well said. That's and exactly they, what we want. That will pay off. And the hardest thing, especially when you're a teenager, is to get them to understand. You know, the old taking the high road, you always end up better off. Right. And that'll show up in your athletics, your academics, your personal interactions. Everywhere you go, if you learn to conduct yourself in that manner, then no matter where you go, you're, you're always going to be on that high road. And, and we, we've seen multiple incidents where, you know, other teams are making bad decisions or saying things that aren't appropriate. And what we're just trying to, you know, reinforce with our team is that championship sportsmanship and you know, our third core value is what we call Scarlet Hawk 24-7, 365. Right. Whether you, you know, that whether big I, M. Yes. That big M on your chest. It's there whether I go out, you know, Saturday night I take my family out to dinner in, I don't know, Bellingham or Hopedale. Right. I'm still wearing this. I'm still the Milford Athletic Director, and I have to live up to those expectations whether or not I'm wearing, although I do pretty much only wear red, white, and black these days. My wife actually made a joke about that over the weekend. I have nothing. I have no other colors for tops. I have nothing. And I'm okay with that. I love it. My shoe, everything. Um, but no, we expect our kids, and, I, and we talk about this openly. I think we have, you know, we have open, but we have loud and proud expectations, and, and that's where we've that's where we've been. I'm very appreciative of our past history. I'm very appreciative of where we are now, and I certainly 
know where we want to go as far as the so future. So talk to me about the, the lost kids, the ones that we say, well, we kind of, we really do love you, but go away, the golfers. Yes, yeah, they, you know. <laughs> Poor kids. I know, because they, they never play on campus. They, you know, all their away away games, away matches are on the road. Even their, their home, home matches. Their home are, matches are on the road, right? They're right next door in Hopedale, which is fantastic. Um, it is incredibly difficult as an athletic director to schedule home matches, but Hopedale Country Club has been, it's been so easy. They've been great. But, yeah, no, it's great. We, um, I, I don't think I've missed, in the three years, missed more than one or two golf matches simply because of scheduling and whatnot. I love going to watch those guys, and, and we've had a couple of girls in that time play. This year was super exciting. You know, we, we had a great team. We had Ryan Tommaso, who uh, won the MVP last year of the league. He won the uh, Hockamock League Golf Tournament this year, came in first place, which we're excited about. He and Anthony Arcudi um, were Hockamock League All-Stars, and we were in it for the Hockamock League Championship to the final, final, final match of the season. We headed up against North Attleboro, and stay in your seat. We lost it by one stroke. It was just, it was what it was. It is what it is. But, it, it, you know, to be in it until the very last yeah. game, match, or meet. They say the people who lose the Super Bowl, you know, are, de- wait a minute. You yeah. made it to. You were in the big dance. You made you it were right to the here. big game. You know, the other you know what? Thirty teams are I was sitting say, at home. There's probably twenty nine other teams yes. that would like to have been. Would lo- even if they had to lose yes. at the big dance. Yeah. Would like to have been in up the there. big. They would like to have been dancing, right? right? So though you know those guys, Coach Potty. You know, I have to tell you, I, I've like you know, I'll tell anybody that listens. I've been in athletics since since age eight. Coach Potty has got to be the most dedicated and fired up golf coach I've ever seen. He loves the sport. He loves the kids. They love him. It's like a small family. You know, you're talking about 12 to 15 kids. Coach Chappie helps them. Nobody's more, you know, dedicated and crazy about athletics than Coach Chappie. They make a good team, and it's just a great situation. I love going to watch those guys play, you know. I was able to make it up to the Hockamock League um, golf competition up in Canton. Drove up, got a chance to see those guys hit on a premier course. That's a great course, you know. That's a championship course, and it was just fun. Mm. They just they take it so serious. Other schools in other leagues maybe treat golf as a second or third tier, as you would like, you know, alluding to as you know, as a joke. I know you joke, but um, well, no, you always felt bad because every other sport we can host. Yeah, in yeah, Milford. we're at home. We're at home for something, and right? you sit there and say, "Well, guys, gals, we we really do love you, but yeah, shoo, yeah, you're off. You're, you're off ne- today. We're never gonna let you're you play. You're home, but you're away. Yeah. right, yeah." Um, I mean, Holy Cross just went down in Yankee Stadium, and it was our football home game against Fordham. And I sat there and said, "Women, yeah, how, how does, does that, that make a sense, home right? Game, we're in the Bronx yes. playing a team from the Bronx. So you sit there and say, the closest you can come is Hopedale, right? Six God minutes down the road, we'll take you know. Yeah, but still, it's, yeah, it's off it, campus. It, it's like you know, it's similar to um, even baseball, which has got you know a wonderful reputation. I mean, we're considered one of the best baseball towns in, in the state, if not New England. And just because it's off campus, there's a little bit of an ostraciza- ostracization to it. They're ostr- you can't help it. To bring your crowd off campus, yeah. your students, you know, the parents. But you're not still dip- in Milford. Yes, this is true. Fino Field is still Milford. Yes. You know, so you're still feeling it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I just it's not as much of a stretch as Hopedale. Even though Ho- it's, for some people, the Hopedale Country Club is probably closer than Fino Field. Yes. But it's that yep, depending on where you live. Yep. That gravitational pull of leaving the town of Milford. Agreed. So did we miss any of the nine? So let me see. We talked about field hockey, boys and girls soccer. We talked about football. We talked about both cross countries. Um, girls volleyball made the tournament. Uh, that's what scares me is that we missed. Yeah, one. no, no. I think we. I think this is our ninth. Um, and we talked so about cheer winning the state championship. Um, so the girls volleyball team yes, made it. Yes, um, and not only made it, they won. A, they won a couple of games, and we ended up um, it, it, actually in the state semifinals. Who do we run into? Another Hockamock League team. Really? So we, we got we got um, we lost. We got bounced by another Hockamock League team, but. But we'd already the played semis. them twice. Yeah, in the semis. semifinal, we were it was one one game away from being in the big dance. I know so. it's, it's got to be hard to keep it in perspective, because at that point the kids are put everything they have. Yes. Yeah. To sit there and say, okay, guys, there's 28 other teams. 
that would that love would to love be to here. have switched with you. Absolutely. Win, lose, or draw, they would love to be on that side of the court playing instead of up there watching. Right. No, f fantastic. And you know what I liked about that is we were, um, we were very fortunate to, um, what's the word I want to use? Coerce would probably not be appropriate, but strongly encourage Coach Linda Zakili to return to the sidelines. She took over this year as head coach. Loved the Zakilis. You know, Nick and I have become very close, and he's just been an amazing help and, and friend in my transition into this job. But Linda, Linda is, the, is just like the dream coach. There are days when she can absolutely, and I say this, she's probably watching, or will be watching. She can drive you crazy with all the double checking and triple checking, but I love that. Because I don't have, when Linda's in charge, I don't have to worry about anything. The thing is, it's going to get done. Will and get, it's going to get done not well. Fall through the crib. Absolutely not. We're, we're ready for everything. You know, she got us right back where we wanted to be. You know, uh, great season. Uh, again, got the MIA Sportsmanship Award. The whole state of Massachusetts, we get the Division II MIA Sportsmanship Award, which we're excited about. Um, that was up in Shrewsbury, so we drove up, brought the whole team up to receive the award. Our principal was with us, Principal Banach. Very classy, but, um, you know, my, my going phrase for Coach Zakili, she was actually Coach of the Year uh, two years ago. I nominated her. We nominated her. The boys, when she was the boys coach, she's now the assistant coach for the boys. Um, and I think I wrote in the write-up to help the boys nominate her. She's, I, I think I, this is the way I coined it, was Coach Zakili is in Hall of Fames that haven't been built yet. That's how darn good she is, but you know? know? When you look at these people, Certainly not doing it for the money. No, no. Nope. You know, again, somebody You're like not going to get rich coaching high school at EMC. EMC. Billion dollar company, vice president, right? The hundreds of millions of dollars you give him his salary. Yes. You know, I mean, some of these coaches, what? Closer to hundreds of pennies. Right, I was <laughs> right. <gonna> say, <laughs> you know, you're not giving these no. people. Nope. If they really did look at the payment per hour, I think we in Milford would violate. Yes. The minimum wage rule. We would decimate. You know, because you sit there and say, it, how yeah. many hours does a coach put in, not just with the kids, but thinking, sure. putting together? If, so as a former head coach, there were a couple of years where I did do the math, and it ended up being less than a dollar per hour. That's if what I'm you saying. count in the recruiting, the phone calls, the emails, the um, strategizing, the game planning, coaching your two, two and a half hour practice every day, half hour with the captains and coaches ahead of time, half hour. It, it really does become a full-time job during the season or darn close, you know, 30, 35 hours. For what, a couple grand? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you think yeah. about it, it. It truly is. You know, people it's for the love of the, the game and the love of kids. At these colleges and they say, well, they're making three, four hundred thousand. It's like, no. They're making three or four hundred dollars worth yeah. a thousand dollars. Yeah. If you look at most of the local colleges, the Division Threes, and some of the Division Twos, they're they're not. They're five, six thousand dollars for a head yeah. coach. You know, at, at, the, at the college level, and we're less than that at the high school level. It's it's not about. It's certainly not for the money. It's not. If you're doing it properly, and you're coaching the way you need to be yeah, coaching. But if you're not, you don't last. Right. Well, you shouldn't kids, last. The kids will feel it. Yep. You know, year after year, um, you know, one of the most touching moments is when your kids come back years later. Yes. And tell you thank you. And it wasn't just for the coaching. Yep. It was for being there when they needed help, for doing all the extra stuff. Yes. And you can see it in the coaches. You know, when a cheerleading coach takes a little extra time to introduce my daughter to the coach of Holy Cross. Right. Not for any monetary reason, just because it, it's the right, because Heather she thinks Tony highly of your daughter. Out of it. No. They got nothing out nope. of it. Nope. They're just helping kids. You know, I think it's, it's, sort of a, it's sort of a pay it forward from a historical perspective. Sure. It, you know, when I first started my career at age 22 as a teacher and head coach, I think um, my opinion, why I got into teaching and coaching was because my life had been changed by my teachers and coaches. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the folks that I had in middle school and high school. I wouldn't have gone on. I, hadn't, I wouldn't have had the success that I had, none of that. All of that is attributed to, you know, some of it was my parents and, and how they pushed me, but a lot of it was two or three special coaches who said, you, you can make something of yourself, you and know, you want to give that back. You, you remember back, and I skipped school, and Not back you. then, oh, God. <laughs> Uncle Paul, Paul Raftery, yep. decided, you're not doing that anymore. 
So he used to drive from North Bow Street, cross town to the Heights, pick me up, and bring me to school. Drag you back, right? Yeah. And you sit there and say, now, wait a minute, he didn't have to do that. Nope. But it's that kind of thing that you see so many of the coaches, so many of the educators in Milford yep. doing that extra because they have a passion for it. They, you know, they stick with it. They stay the cause because, you know what, I, I think the vast majority of them, somebody did that for them. And, and I think a lot of us just want to give back. And if you can, you know, I'll say to our head coaches, if you can do that for a couple of kids each yeah. season, you're not going to reach everybody, and not everybody needs to be reached. But if right. you can reach a couple who need it, you can change their lives. I can't tell you how many essays I read every year that are college, you know, entry essays where kids will talk about their, their coach or a coach and how it changed their lives. I mean, it would, it would bring you to tears. I could give you two or three of them, and you wouldn't be able to read any more. I'd have a stack like this, but you'd, you'd stop because you just, you don't, you're not hydrated enough to cry that much. <laughs> so now the MIAA didn't think your leadership academy was worth much, <laughs> did they? Good, yeah, you don't miss much. Um, yeah, so we are in our second season. Um, Explain what the leadership academy is so, about. So when I came on board, um, one of my philosophies, having been in, in education and athletics and academics and, you know, K to 12, top to bottom, for almost 25 years now is that you are only going to be as successful and good really as your leaders. So that means you got to have good head coaches, you got to have good assistant coaches, you got to have good captains, and that trickles down to your foot soldiers, the, 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 the kids on the field. It certainly does. Um, so when I arrived, one of the things that I had mentioned in my interview was that I would like to, I've been working on this. I, I worked with Harvard for two years on a Teaching for Understanding Institute. Um, I was certified in the Boomerang Project, which we had, I think we talked about last time, this really unique learning situation. And I've also got a really strong back, background in Project Adventure, which is experiential learning. So I started to merge this and talked about bringing it to Milford and, and would, would they allow me to launch it with the captains. So I put it out to the head coaches and the assistant coaches, and we had a dozen to 15 coaches who jumped on board. So what we did is we really wanted to ramp up our, our, our leaders, our captains, and um, we couldn't find a program that we really loved that we wanted to marry, so we built one. We, uh, I think last time I was on, I think we were at about 100 hours, and we had built this program. So we launched it two days uh, the first summer, and um, yeah, actually the interviews with Milford TV were amazing. You had these seniors on the second uh, and final day being interviewed and they were saying, yeah, we didn't want to show up yesterday. Thursday, we, yeah, the last thing we want to do the week before school is spend two days with the new athletic director. And then the powerful aha moment was, but you know what? We wish we, wish we were coming here tomorrow. We loved it. And it was. It was very experiential. It was um, very powerful. We talked about, uh, and we continue to talk about leadership. What does that look like? Conflict resolution. We talk about communication. You know, we talked about social media, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Um, and then we talk about team building and how do you build your team. So to get to your point, I know that was a, a you know, probably long answer, but then we started meeting with the kids once a month. This was always the plan, to spend about 60 to 90 minutes with them per month, once a week, uh, once a month to contact and continue. It didn't, we didn't want it to be a two-day, you know, 48-hour wonder situation and then leave them hanging. So we, Jay Mastey was one of our critical people there. So was Joe Todd, Jonathan Raskow. Um, was big our athletic trainer again a unique guy doesn't doesn't need to be involved in volunteer all this time he's our tr athletic trainer but dove in jumped in with us um, and along with a couple other people as we moved along but long story short is it really went very well we got a lot of great feedback at the end of the year and then um, Joe Todd and I were invited to come up to the New Balance camp up in New Hampshire to present so I presented my leadership module he presented his conflict resolution and um, word just kind of sprung from there People were looking to buy it and borrow it. And we were at that point, we're just saying, we didn't get into this for money. We, we're not going to sell it. And um, we're not ready to give it away yet. When it's right, we'll release it. Um, so we ran it again this year. We're in the middle of doing it. Um, I have worked with our special ed department and our um, lead nurse, Judy Dagnes. Next summer, we're going to add a third day, which is going to be picked up by some of their grants. And we're going to go to the... Um, Franklin YMCA, one of the um, one of the local, either Hopkinson or Franklin, I'm not sure yet. And we're going to just do Project Adventure team building all day long. But as we moved forward, the MIAA caught wind that New Balance wanted to buy it, and, and they caught uh, a 15-minute 
sort of synopsis that Milford TV, they spent the entire two days with us and built this really cool promo uh, video. They saw that and just said, oh, we need to look at that. Can we come, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we, we just have never found a way to make that work and we're not comfortable giving it away. So at the last, uh, one of the last um, MIA meetings I was at, they had said to us, well, how about if we come to you? You can host it. You can host this leadership conference. We'll bring people to you, and why don't you present? So we were like, let's see again. We can do that. We That's can make that work. That's the big M. All of a sudden, yeah. Milford is being held out as a standard of excellence yes. in another area. And we feel great about that. We do because you should feel proud. You, you, know? you did something that not only helped the kids, but the impression of the town by other people. Absolutely. Yeah, people are looking at us, you know, saying, and you know, I should say to you, in between there, um, Coach Chappie is really involved with New England Swimming Association, so they had me come in. He hosted uh, the first ever um, consortium of high school and college swim coaches, so he asked me to do a one-hour presentation. I did a, a shortened version of it, um, and now next year they're offering Hey, we'll pay you. What do you need? We want to do the full thing. We want, to, we want you to come in for an entire Saturday and just, we want to bring up, the college coaches want to bring their captains to Milford High School next year so that we can run whatever version we choose is what they told us uh, of this leadership academy. I, I don't know if it's because nobody else is doing it as well or we just have caught on to something special, but it, it definitely has evolved into something that we're super proud and we're passionate about. I really believe that if we have great leaders we're going to go f farther, not only with victories, but building great people. That's well, what we want. A lot of it, too, is just building that belief. Yes. Uh, years yep. ago, I got invited to go up and participate in an entrepreneurial studies program at Holy Cross. And you studied for a month with these kids. And I knew a lot of the, the basketball players and all because of my daughter cheering. Yep. Yep. We were always there. I walked in, and they had broken everybody into teams. And I looked over, and I said, I'm so proud of you guys. You're working so hard for second place. <laughs> and, of course, there's the Larry captain Bird, of the basketball right there, <laughs> team and all. And he's looking at me saying, Mr. C, oh. what do you mean second? I said, well, it's obvious that my team is going to win. Is going to take first. <laughs> I love that. So if I can help any of you get second. Yes, l just let me know. Let me know. <laughs> and, of course, I sat I down, and they said, do you realize what you just did? I said, yeah. yeah. I just painted a big bullseye on you. Yes. So guess what? We better be the best because I've never lost – a sales contest, yep. and I'm certainly not, not going to start out. here. Yeah, good for you. And the that's, greatest that's thing awesome. was they did their presentation. Now, most of the kids at night were putting in an hour every other day, or my kids put in three hours, and it was tough. And I told them, you drew the short straw. Right, right. You don't want to be on my team. Nope. This is summer. Until the end, right, said, right. But if you stick through it, you'll learn more because the other teams were – learning how to do a little marketing presentation or something, I told the kids they're going to learn how to set up a biotech company. Yes, right. And it was three, four nights a week, four hours, on top of six hours of everything, class. Yes, everything else they're doing. At the end, they were perfect. I mean, even to the point of beating into them how they dressed, yep. how they walked. It matters. It, it it's all, presentation. How right? they presented their business cards. Yep. And it was so funny because when it was done, we all went out. I walked in, I put my head down, very, mm, just sad. And when they announced that my team had won, the kids came up and said, oh, we hate you. <laughs> and so he goes, we saw your face. Yeah. And it was like, we thought we oh, had my God, we disappointed you. Yeah, yep. You know, it was like, no, the guys were great. No, but you built a team in that and short amount know, of time. It's been years and since I did the first one. Every once in a while I get an email. This still works. Yes, yeah. Because they remembered the skills we practiced, even how to walk in, how to stand. Because you know, everybody's just hanging, Absolutely. and these guys were perfect. All of those tight skills. Some of those skills transcend time. They just carry. They just, they just move and forward. Interviewing and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love that you're doing at the high Thank school you. level yeah. what I thought at a college level was lacking. You know, well, you know what really, you know what really tipped me off was when I got there and I realized, okay, you're in charge of 29 teams now, and how how can you make an impact? I, I could impact the teams that I was the head coach of, you know, and as a form of building principal, 
You can impact the teachers who can impact the kids. So I felt like that's, that was the way that we had to sort of diffuse it out there. But I really, you know, I really sat down with our head coaches in our first meeting and I said, just raise your hand. Tell me, where, you know, when you, who was the captain in high school? All the hands went up. Who was the captain in college? Most of the hands went up. And I said, now tell me, where, you know, where, where was your training? Just tell me what, what, what school, what book, where did you get training? Solid, you know, really great training to allow you to be a good captain or a good leader. I didn't see a hand. And everybody's looking around going, what's he, what's well, he, what's he, he talking about? Yeah. I said, guess what? I was a college, uh, I was a captain of three sports in high school, captain of two in college. Not once did anybody ever say to me, these are the things that I want you're responsible for. These are the things that you need to do on a daily, not even on a daily basis, five or six. You led warm-ups. Um, and b beyond that, it was you were expected to work really hard and be a good role model. But there's so much else. There's so much else, especially but, in this complicated know, it's, society. It's amazing because we grew up a soccer house. There's a team in Boston, still there, Boston Breakers, yeah, who, who needed yep. places mm -hmm. for girls to live. Oh, yes, you mentioned this previously. So yeah. we had... A number of kids who played, and they're now like daughters. I just flew out to Vancouver for my KK's wedding, and that was 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, we stayed in touch. But it was amazing. They put it into perspective because 14 kids play in the United States. Wow. So you had to be the best kid in all of New England over five years, statistically, to even get a, crack to get it, right? a shot yep. at a spot on the national team. So when you think of how many kids... Mind-boggling. Or, you know, we just did the basketball thing where 24 kids a year are picked up by the NBA. Yep. When you look at the percentage chance you have of making it, of you being the best kid in all of Northern California yep. or all of New England... It's decimal points. ...over five points. years. It's decimal points. But if you can teach them life skills... Yep. ...that they do become leaders, Wow. And now you really you're right. No, you're right. And I agree with you because the reality is, and we talk about this openly, hey, if you want to play in college, we'll help you. you sure. know, and we need, to, we need to continue to do better and, and, and help our kids connect them with coaches that, and colleges that are appropriate for them. But the reality is, you know, I, I give the statistics. We have a, we have a fall preseason uh, sports meeting. We have a winter. We have a spring, you know, preseason with all the parents and all the kids in the room. And I'll put the statistics up. Three to five percent. Of, of all nationwide high school athletes make a team, three to five. So if we have 400 kids playing, okay, you're talking, you're talking what, 12? 12, 12, a dozen kids. Kids that will make a team in college. Right. Less than 1%, point nine right now, would, would even consider entertaining not a full scholarship, any kind of scholarship. Let's call it 1%. 1%. Maybe out of those 400 so now you're talking three or four kids might. Now, we're well above that. We're usually yeah. in the, you know, double digits. But, yeah, but that's Milford. It, well, <laughs> even if it's Milford, that means two dozen. If you, yeah. I mean, Pete, if you double yeah. the acceptance rate, that's 24. Yeah. Yep. I think we had 39 kids last year that, you know, from our, but that, so, that's Milford. So we have higher expectations three and dozen. we can back it up. It's still three dozen out of how many yeah. athletes are going to make it to college. Yes. And, and sit on a team and suit up. But With all of on. them are going to have to go out and get a job. That's it, right there. Absolutely. That's, that's the linchpin, right? That's where everything connects. And, it, and, and you know, I, I know you know where we're trying to go with this. With the leadership and the, the, the core values that we have, it's real simple. Work hard, be a good person, and for the most part, if you're prepared, we, we use this terminology, practice hard to win easy. You know, if you're yep. doing everything you can do to get prepared for that interview, everything you can do to get prepared for that presentation, if you're doing, ev if you're outworking everybody the way your team did, you know, that, that story that you were talking about, the people are putting in one hour, you're putting in three per night. See, you're even, getting ahead. Even when you're we prepared. were teaching these kids, you know, I laughed because I said, what do you think the Portuguese definition of spontaneity is? And they had all the, and I said, no. <laughs> Many well-rehearsed alternatives. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to borrow I said, that. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> People who are spontaneous in their replies in the boardroom, it's because they've thought about every angle. Absolutely. Over and over, they've practiced it. Because when you're in the middle, I mean, I always bring up, I remember they did a study, and they couldn't understand why police in the Midwest, it was a Midwest town, after they got into firefights, 
they had shells in their pockets. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was they f realized that when they were at the firing range, the guy who ran the firing range was screaming at them not to drop their brass on the floor. Oh, so, so they were picking dropping them. Yeah. You know, these were the old revolver days. Yes, Put yeah, them in the pocket. The six, yeah. When they got in the middle of a shootout, they took the time because it was Pavlovian. It, it was, yeah, they were just and trained. They, and you sit there and Operating say, that's the same yep. thing with these kids. If we train them right, absolutely. then when they get into their life style, they'll do the right things. Yes. So thank you. You got it. My pleasure. It's always great to be with As you. As always, I love looking at all the different facets of being a Milford High, Milford Middle School, just a Milford kid. There's so much we offer. Uh, if you have a question, pick up the phone, call your school, because you'll get a very warm reception. And as always, thank you for everything you do for our kids. Yeah, absolutely. Right back at you. I can't wait till the end of the winter season and you we get it. back and talk about those sports. And to our six loyal viewers, <laughs> good night. May God bless. And may tomorrow be a better day than today. Awesome. Thank you. Too long since I've been home Been running all my lives up